Hey guys, welcome back. We are still working on this short block. Uh, feeling a little better. Um, today we're gonna tackle probably the remainder of the short block, the cam, the tappets, the J-Jets, the pickup tube, the cam bushing, and maybe even put the oil pan on. I might not do oil pan pickup tube just cause it's a little bit harder to paint when you put the oil pan out there. Uh, but either way, we'll go ahead and dive into it. Uh, we have our little change of plans. Meyer really wanted the Waggler billet rods over there. So we're just gonna go ahead and do Street Fighter. Since this is just a parent block, Street Fighter should definitely hold the power. These are rated to 1500 horsepower. Uh, we have done close to 1600 with these without an issue. So we'll just throw those in there, get Meyer a little bit of a heads up. Uh, the last episode we got the uh, block measured, we got the crank installed, and then we got our pistons filed. So now we're going to go ahead and dive into, um, let's see here, what do, what do we want to work on? Um, let's start with the cam bushing. So I'll get you guys set up on a tripod. All right, so this right here is the bushing that we are after. Um, Molly makes two different bushings. Uh, one is for a common rail. One is for the older storm blocks. Uh, this one is going to be 198 one uh sh uh you guys can kind of see here it fits nice in this groove here so what we're going to go ahead and do is knock out this freeze plug pretty simple procedure uh we have a um machined piece here so 2.1145 and then in here we have 2.120 so uh, again just barely fits in there and then on the shoulder here on this outside portion we have 2.282 and on the bushing the new one we have <clears throat> 2.338 again this one is 2.286 so basically this centers and you're actually able to hammer it all the way through. Um, so what I do, I really don't like hitting the block on accident. So I take a 13 millimeter half inch drive socket on an extension. Boom, jeez. Oh. Stuck on the crank a little bit there, no big deal. So now we have our bushing out. And the nice part about this tool, as you can see here, guys, there's really no damage to this um, flange at all uh, because it's such a nice fit in there. And you guys will notice we have a hole in here. <clears throat> there is a hole. Get you guys in here. We have a hole in the block right there. So the hole in that bushing needs to line up with the hole on the block ready for the new one just a little paper towel a little brake clean because they use a little retaining compound on these so you'll go ahead and get that nice and cleaned out now on this one you want it to be perfect aligned with that and you guys can see here it's got a little bit of a press fit to it and then to hold this we're going to use 640 loctite um on the engine or sorry on this bushing so these bushings sometimes you can reuse them sometimes they get pretty hammered up it just really depends how gentle or rough somebody was when they were installing the um camshaft that's why you'll see a lot of guys they'll cheat um and put like a crescent uh crescent wrench stuff like that on there so we got some retaining compound on there now this bushing is not directional it can go in either way the big thing is you want to make sure that the hole for the oil is filled up with the, or lined up, excuse me, with the bushing here. So we'll go ahead and mark this as the center point because it's kind of hard to see as you push it through this, this blocks your view of the hole like so. And you're just going to tap it in. evenly and again 
making sure you're even. Okay, so our hole is lined up. We're looking good. All right, so we're there. And then I will grab a bushing driver, or a bearing driver, a racing bearing driver. These are aluminum. I set it here. And that <clears throat> ensures that we don't damage the shoulder. It's flush to the block. We're looking, oil holes lined up. We are on our way, boys. So that, in a nutshell, is how you install that. Again, we'll go ahead and get all the retaining compound off. You wanna make sure you clean out the bushing. You don't want any gunk getting in there. And then I will run my finger around the back side and get any 640 that might have squeezed its way out there. And there you have it, your bushing's installed. While we're doing freeze plugs, let's go ahead and knock this one out. So this one right here is the oil galley uh, freeze plug. So again, you're gonna take your 640. And again, you just wanna get it on the, on the outer rim here, not on the bottom. Set that in there. And I start with a hammer. So I'll get it kind of square. And I hit that flush. And then a Silver Eagle 13 millimeter quarter inch drive fits very nicely inside here. And basically what you're looking for is about is about this much. Um, that's about an eighth of an inch of recess. We'll go ahead and knock out the... This thing apparently needs some, some, some grease. Can you guys still see here? So we'll go ahead and knock out these two right here. Um, same size freeze plug. And basically we're just gonna repeat the process here with the 640 Loctite and the hammer followed by the socket. We'll go ahead, grab the other one. And you guys will know if you forget this one because you'll go to fire it up or dry crank it to build oil pressure on a fresh build and it won't build any pressure. And if you're lucky, it will leak out of the adapter plate. If you're unlucky, uh, it won't leak, but you won't have any oil pressure. Generally, we actually, we had a customer in not too long ago, um, the freeze plug was in here a little crooked and it was like this slow leak, very, very slow. Um, couldn't figure it out. They pulled the trans, the adapter plate, they RTV'd the O-ring of the adapter plate. I mean, they did everything. Cause on a common reel, this seal here is actually in the adapter plate. Well, they thought it was leaking from there. They thought it was the rear main. Um, I think he had had the shop work on it two or three times. It ended up being one of these. So these little buggers are extremely problematic for oil leaks. Um, now that we got our freeze plugs done, uh, let's go ahead and put the front cover on and then we can put the cam and tappets in. All right, for starters, we, you guys remember we coated all this with oil. So I run a paper towel with some brake clean over it. That way the RTV has something to stick to. You also wanna make sure you don't have any of the remaining gasket. Obviously we don't, but if you're doing this at home, you might. And we'll grab our Interstate McPee gasket set here. And this little bugger right here is what you need. And you gotta see, if you don't have these two alignment dowels, you need to get them. Uh, they have to be in there for this to work properly. And I always test fit. This case on the block to make sure we don't have any issues. Cause when this thing is soaked in silicone, it gets very hard to do the job. So we have no issues there. All the Holes line up. We'll move right along. 
to the RTV. Now there's a million ways, again guys, to do this. I use Permatex Ultra Black. Um, I noticed Drew uses gray. So far that's held up great. Nothing to say bad about it. It's just, you kind of figure out what works well and you, you stick with it. So I will RTV this entire thing. And then I put some in the bolt hole a little bit. And that is to create a nice seal on the bolt. It also acts like a thread locker. And on a new block, it's kind of hard to see on these older blocks that have been in use. You'll see the um, gasket stain. Okay. And around the oil pump, I try to be pretty conservative with the RTV. Because the last thing we want is the block leaking and then I'll connect this right here. Now, if you're not gonna use RTV, no problems. This is the only spot you need to RTV where the block meets the timing case. Then we're gonna go ahead and I will drop it on here and then you kinda slowly lay the gasket out, making sure it's hitting all the bolt holes. And the nice part, whether you use Indian tack, RTV, you need to use something because this gasket likes to move around and it gets really hard to start these bolts that hold this case on. Um, and then I will do another round of silicone. Again, you guys don't have to do it this way. This is just how I do it. You want enough silicone where it breaks away easy. That was actually one thing I learned um, at Drew's shop that Gene showed me is instead of using minimal amount of silicone, use a little bit more. It gives it an easier way for you to grab onto it and break off the extra once it's set up. So that's something I've kind of taken with me from their shop. And then we set this bad boy down, make sure all your bolts are good. And then you start it on the alignment dowels, slowly set it down like so. And grab bolts. All right. So the five inner ones, one, two, three, four, five, are these torque style. Um, I use a little bit of red Loctite. We do not want these to rattle loose. So I get them started like so. Got our cover bolts here. A little red Loctite. And you guys are probably like, oh, there's not a lot of thread engagement. We have to tap the case down on the dowels and that's where the extra clearance will inherently come from. All right, so we got a T40 for these guys and a 10 mil for these guys. You guys can kind of see the, the gasket material start to push out. You wanna make sure you got good engagement of the case to the block. Like so, once it's on the dowels, you can go ahead, run these puppies in here. Right. And then one thing I do that's a little different, I will actually put some extra bolts um, on the outer side here to make sure that we're getting a good clamp load on the whole gasket. And guys, just a little, tip or trick or whatever you want to call it um there's a guy on ebay that sells like he'll take apart an engine and he'll sell you all the bolts that came out of it um it's like 50 bucks i think i bought two of those kits because when we were using all those hamilton blocks you guys remember that we didn't always have um like a lot of the hardware zach does not include which is fine I mean, he tells you that but um, we, uh, started buying from him and it's been, it's been great. Uh, now we're going to go ahead, torque all those down and notice how we didn't put red Loctite on the ones that are coming out. So I usually start in the center and I torque these to 15 foot pounds and then I let the Loctite set up or sorry, the RTV set up real quick and then I'll torque them to 18 foot pounds. What you guys will see is all this right here where the cam bearings got to go through or the retaining 
uh, cam retainer goes, um, it'll get bound up on the silicone. So I now just make it a habit to clean it all out from right there. That way I don't have to fight it once it's hardened. And she's looking good. We got good gasket coverage. You guys can see a lot of that RTV looked really uh, excessive. There's really not much left poking out of here. Um, so we did a good job. The good thing is we see this squeezed all the way across. That means we won't have any leaks from these uh, front case to the block. And lastly, I will do that same thing around the oil pump, especially right here where it got a little bit carried away, it looks like. So you do not want RTV stopping the pump from engaging on the block because a lot of guys think that the oil pump seals here it actually seals against the block in the, the groove here and if you choose not to rtv your block good on you one last thing you gotta worry about i guess but i've had way too many of these bigger power engines that vibrate a lot they will actually leak on you quite a bit so it's just kind of the habit i've gotten into is rtv and them stops all the comebacks for oil leaks and this and that plus this case you got to pull the cam front end of the engine apart quite a bit of work to get her done um and we already painted this off camera now let's go ahead drop our tappets in all right guys and real quick um i know it'll probably come up what we want to do with this cam tunnel is you're going to stick your dial bore gauge in just like we did before rock it back and forth on every uh all seven journals and then you're going to take your camshaft which this is a used one but it'll serve the purpose here and you want to measure the diameter of um the cam journal itself all seven and then you take this uh bore minus the actual uh journal diameter and that'll give you your guys's oil clearance um on the camshaft lobes all right, for cam and tappets, we're gonna be using a set of Hamilton 1.45 cast tappets. Um, he will only warranty a cam going flat if you use his tappets. The tappets go on the driver's side of the engine right there. And what we do is we put some assembly lube on the stem, some assembly lube on the wear surface and drop them in. The nice part is the assembly lube will hold them in from kind of fall out. So you can do the block about vertical to drop the camshaft down into it. So let's get them cleaned up and lubricated. Um, what I do is I take the assembly lube and I will just put a whole gob in my hand. And then I will, again, you guys can kind of see, don't need much. As soon as you put the push rods in and tighten it down, the um, everything gets tight, so. And then you want to put a little bit down in the cup there, like so. I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy down. You will have to spin the crank around a little bit um, to get all 12 of these in. So don't panic. It'll, it'll be all right. Lighting's kind of poor, but... You guys get the gist, they're down there. We put all 12 of them in there. I don't know if you could achieve screwing that up. The only time I've ever seen somebody screw it up is um, they will uh, try to jam it in there if they're not the right size. And I've also seen guys put them in dry, which is just a recipe for disaster. One last thing I'd like to highlight, you guys see over here, see this bushing depth right there? Let's try and get it focused. The bushing depth, you wanna make sure that that bushing does not hit the tappet. And again, we're right here. There's our oil hole. As you can see there, it's unblocked. So we are good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and install our cam key, our, our keyway. I usually make it a habit of putting a new one in. Um, you don't have to, but it does make life a little easier. So. Jeez. Oh, Trying to get it started like so. And then you take a hammer. And... Yikes. 
Well, you guys get the drift. I'm gonna go ahead and pound this in. Uh, I need two hands. So now that we got it started, we'll just finish her off. Tap in. And then I usually, this is not fully seated. I usually angle this side a little bit in to help it set on the gear. So it's now time to press the old gear off. I actually watched some guys on YouTube the other day dry ice a cam gear. I'm here to tell you that that might have been effective, but this $100 Harbor Freight shop press is also quite effective. So go ahead, position cam. Now, you gotta be careful because there is a there's a thrust plate still from the factory. Okay, so now we're good. And I'm not gonna be able to catch it because you guys are being held and I'm operating this, so, oh well. Boom. All right, and here is our factory cam retainer. You guys can see this is actually where it rubs on the cam here pull this out of the way and we'll get it set up for the new one one of the cool things about a cummins cam is it's cast so if you drop it on the ground it shatters in a couple pieces guys this was a factory cam we had no use for now we got our new cam in there i always put the keyway where i can see it and then we have this guy all cleaned up we're gonna reuse it not much damage at all to it so um, the numbers face out and you can kind of tell that just because of the way the cam gear rode. And then one thing you want to always double check, cause I've had this before, make sure that the cam sticks out a little past the thrust plate. I have had a couple of Hamilton cams show up that were a little bit um, short here. This one doesn't seem to be a problem. We do have a little clearance, but you'll know You'll press the gear on until it stops and this won't spin. Okay, when installing the cam gear, make sure it's clean. This, I guess, could go on backwards, but you would really struggle. Um, so we'll get the keyway lined up and I kind of cock the gear like this till I find the keyway. And then I just straighten it up like that. And then we have to press the gear on, which I start with a just a fat chunk of metal. Press it a little too high still. There you go. And you can only go until the cam bottoms out. And then from there, you gotta grab a thing that only touches the gear. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Okay, so we are on. And if you guys remember on the old cam, that shaft protruded through a little bit. So we gotta get something that presses on the outside there. So we have this um, part from a tranny with this bearing thing. It'll give us plenty of clearance and we're just gonna go till it bottoms out right down there. Make sure it's still centered. As you can see. Okay, once the press stops, that should still spin. You guys can see it's bottomed out. Release the press tension, put these back, and our cam gear is on the cam. We are back over at our shop. We got the cam gear put on. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this thing lubed up. Uh, as you guys can see, we didn't go past 180 degrees vertical. We don't want those tappets falling out on us. Um, and yeah, let's get this thing greased up. Hopefully, Meyer left us enough. Again, it kind of looks wrong, but kind of get the grease. And you just watch your gloves. It'll get caught on all the journals here. But you just want to make sure you got a nice layer of uh, assembly lube on the cam. Uh, I use this Molly Graphite stuff. You can get it at uh, o O'Reilly's. Uh, works really good. Same stuff I saw Drew use, so can't be too far off. And again, I don't, it's not that, I mean, Drew's team was awesome and stuff. Uh, if you have something that works good for you, go for it. I just, 
I look at the great success that they've had over the years um, with their engine program and it kind of was cool to see a lot of the things that we were doing are very similar and then I will squirt a little bit of assembly lube into this cam retainer and then kind of spin it around make sure we get plenty of lube in there and again guys you just I guess there is such thing as too much lube but in this case not really um, then you're gonna want to uh, find the double O and the O on the crank I'll spin you guys around let's get this installed here first again you want it to kind of gently feed in like so you don't want to bang it especially because we just replaced that brand new bushing sometimes you gotta check the crank make sure the crank's not having an issue or a tap it is it hung up like so so we're fighting a little bit of the, the tap it there if it doesn't want to go smooth uh, I've seen that video floating around on Instagram of them like beating a LS cam in uh, would not recommend it okay so we're right there what we're gonna do pull the cam up a little bit rotate the zero on the crank gear And then you want it to line up with the double zero on the cam. Also pay attention to the cam retainer. Make sure that is also oriented in the correct direction. Like so. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So I've seen guys get this cam retainer on the wrong side. So I will set this cam gear on the crank tooth. Get this lined up. Make sure the zero on the cranks lined up with the double zero on the cam. That way we're in time. And now we're gonna go ahead and put our two 13 mil bolts, uh, which I actually saw we had two just chilling right here. I'll tell you what guys, having extra parts never hurts. So we'll go ahead, get these installed. I do 24 foot pounds with red Loctite on these. I'll go ahead and get that done. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get our rear main seal locked into the rear main seal housing. Um, it is directional, it goes like this. I don't generally put anything on here. Just kind of tap this in with the tool. I can't hammer and hold the phone, so I'll check back with you. Basically what you're gonna do is hammer this in until the tool is flush with the housing. Should look like this. Since this is a brand new crank, we do not need to worry about a wear sleeve. And then you put your installation tool like so. We're gonna go ahead and get the RTV set. I run a bead through here, put the gasket on, and put another uh, bead on the gasket. All right, you guys can see the finished product. Cam tunnel taped off, got our freeze plugs, rear main, uh, now we're going to go ahead and flip this over and install our J-Jets. Those are really simple. It'll be kind of hard to show you guys, so I'm going to just demonstrate outside the block here. All right, so lastly, before we put the rods in, J-Jets. Um, if you have a 04 and a half to 07, some of the early 04s, and I've even seen 03s use it. Basically, you see there we have one hole that's tapped, one hole that's plugged. Pretty easy. This goes like this direction. This tab here aligns with that indent there and you take your m8 banjo bolt and basically what this apparatus looks like is like this you want the jet to squirt under the piston um i've seen a lot of different ways to do this i do red loctite on the threads and i will torque these to 10 foot pounds never had an issue i'm gonna try and get you guys a little better view in there but again, very self-explanatory, a little extension work, and you are good to go there. So we'll knock those out. Again, really hard to show. Okay, so we got our J-Jets in. Um, one trick that works really good, grab the J-Jet with the pliers, set it down in there. Um, makes life a little bit easier. But we got them all in, Loctite, torqued. 
Now we can go ahead, start getting our rods in. Okay, we're gonna go into putting the pistons on the rods. If you look here, there's a notch. That notch corresponds with the J-Jet down there. Um, the J-Jet is on the oil cooler side. I always run my rods um, long side towards the oil cooler. So the long side of the rod and the notch are on the same side. Um, pretty simple, straightforward. Brake clean your rods out, brake clean the pins off, lube the pins up, and then you're going to use your, uh, where are they at? Eclipse, which, oh, here they are. And this is how you retain the wrist pin in the rod. Apologize for the background noise, guys. That is actually the um, fan for the heater. Um, it was like 60 degrees the other day, and now it's like, maybe 30 so gotta love winter gotta love winter in utah can just want to break clean that off and you break clean the raw bushing out now guys this here you put a um dowel bore gauge or t-bar gauge here and you measure and this is the last part of the pin measurement um, here once we get through putting this engine together i'll go over all the specs that we use to hit it um, and then we already cleaned the pistons so let's go ahead and get a pair of snap rings to work with these all right i find a pair of snap on 45 degrees work really well and you want to get in there and you want to make sure that you have full engagement on this e-clip here um we're good there so now we'll go ahead grab some assembly lube and you want to put some lube in the piston floor you want to put some lube in the rod end here like so and then Grab the wrist pin. I usually put it on my pinky. Whatever finger kind of jams it. I'm gonna go ahead, stick the pin in. You guys, you shouldn't have to jam that pin in. It should just kind of fall in. And then you see our notch here. Long side of the rod. This is the long side, this is the short side. Long side, push it in. The rod should spin without the um, wrist pin spinning. And then you put your final E-clip. Now on the E-clips, there is a sharp side and a rounded side. I always do the rounded side towards the pin. That way you kind of get the best lock you can get on this E-clip here. And then you'll hear it snap into place. Like this a little bit. There we go. Fully seated. All right, we're going to go ahead, knock out all the rest of these. So we got our rings on the pistons, wrist pins, eclips, rods. Time to get ready to put the rods in the block. To do this, I just buzz all the bolts off, lay the caps down. I'll show you guys kind of how I do it. So you get the engine flipped upside down. And then we're going to go ahead and rinse all the 
cylinders out in case you got any dirt be mindful of the uh um geez the j jets down there they'll kind of catch your fingers if you're not careful all right and then we'll grab another fresh paper towel and we're going to lube up these cylinders you're also going to lube the pistons but it's always a good idea lube up the cylinders a little bit you don't want these pistons getting spun around here while the engines dry okay so one cool thing about the wagglers that i really like and drew's rods do the same thing they have this nice lock um i will say drew's come apart a little bit easier uh i have no idea which one's better i've made good power with these and i'm hoping to make great power with drew's so uh yeah it's normal to kind of loosen the bolts a little bit and just give the bolt heads a couple taps and it'll break the lock free now we're going to go ahead break clean all these caps out break clean the other side of the cap out break clean both sides of our bearings get our bearings installed again um i did this method with the dowel bore gauge uh but i figured since we've already covered that let's go ahead and show you guys how plastic gauge works so we're going to plastic gauge the rods on and we'll compare that to what our actual measurements were okay now that we got both bearings in we're gonna go ahead get you guys set up over here at the block we're gonna do i guess number one first um, and i'll show you guys the plastic gauge method here again it it almost takes more time to plastic gauge but it's kind of one of those things like okay so here's the plastic gauge this is a two to six thousands this is the clevite brand you can get this at most any automotive shop the measuring device is built in right here um, so whatever the plastic crushes to that's essentially your bearing clearance uh, it is this little red stuff here I usually cut it with a razor blade um, so let's go ahead get this piston ready to go in all right so here's our piston ring compressor this one works it uses a little key um, I've done a lot of engines with this one you can kind of tell it's pretty beat up so we'll break clean this out all right so we want the crank to be almost at the bottom of the stroke on cylinders number one. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate it. So now we are at almost bottom dead center down there. You want it a little bit towards the passenger side with the way the rod bolts go. Then we're gonna take our piston like so. We're gonna squirt some oil on it and you want it to be all over the ring. And then I'll take my hand, kind of spin them around a little bit now the piston is going in like this right long side there's the front okay now this is the power stroke so what i generally do is i will put the oil control ring dead center on the power stroke i'll put the second ring right here or sorry i'll put the first ring on this back corner right here Okay, this gap. Then I will put the second ring 120 degrees out this way. And then the oil control ring is almost dead center over the power stroke. I don't know if that matters that much, but it's how I've always done it. Uh, and then with plastic gauge, you put the bearing in dry. So we're gonna go ahead, set this in here. And then you're gonna pull the piston out. Just a skosh, I'll usually set it like this it's an easy way not to drop it make sure you guys can see here so i'll set it like that we got our piston ring compressor we got to open it up a little bit i think the last one that i was doing was five nine so it's a little tight and then you're gonna crank this sucker in fairly tight like that you're gonna go ahead Set your piston in there. And you want to pay attention to the numbers. I know it's kind of hard to see. And since I am by myself, this will be interesting. I'm going to this one. So I'll tap the ring compressor, make sure it's tight on the block. And then I'll just tap this one in. Again, making sure. Okay. So we're fully in. Now 
I turn my head back here and my whole job is to just guide the rod on like so and then from here because we're doing the plastic gauge method that's why I measure them beforehand sometimes it takes a little bit more time at first but once you're putting it together once you're putting it together it actually seems to take less time because now with the plastic gauge you gotta take this thing apart just to put it back together again so we'll get you guys kind of a bird's eye view here so there's the cap that we gotta do and I will push the rod down just a little spin the crank and then pull up on the rod make sure we're sitting flush there put our plastic gauge you want to put it um, perpendicular to the journal so it's going lengthwise really hard to see that plastic gauge you guys can kind of see it there then we take our rod and again just like the crank um, the uh, tang to tang like so and we shredded them in a little bit then we'll take this guy and these torque to 135 so i do 45 90 um 135 135 from there now we're going to go ahead and break the caps off remember you don't want to put any up or down movement on it because the whole point of this you don't want the crankshaft to move and then again like i said before it doesn't take much just a couple of love taps and I'll put my hand right here so it doesn't just like that. And we'll zip these bolts out like so. All right, and you guys can see the mark left by the plastic gauge here. We'll get our measuring davas. Basically, you find the one that fits. So we got two thousandths, two thousandths. So again, this is why the plastic gauge. I mean, it only measures in thousandths. You can kind of eyeball it. Um, this one, I actually did see the crank turn a little bit. Um, it's very hard when you're torquing, um, 135 foot pound fasteners to get it not to spin. And then if you look at it on the other side, I would almost call this like three thousandths, somewhere in that range. So again, this is why plastic gauge kind of sucks because it's not the most accurate. When I measured these, um, I got uh, 3 point, 3 .1 thousandth of oil clearance and here it's only showing two. So it's one of those things like you gotta be careful when you do the plastic gauge because it's not always what it seems. Now we're gonna go ahead, knock out all these rods and get this short block put together, boys.
Got the pistons in with a little help me written on here um, from here we got to do the freeze plugs oil pickup tube oil uh, pan oil cooler coolant outlet front cover oil pump water pump um, billet freeze plug um, I got to order some of these freeze plugs uh, adapter plate but this essentially I've seen short blocks show up just like this. So we're probably gonna wrap it up here. Okay, so now that we have our pistons in, we gotta measure protrusion. You zero it on on the deck. And you're gonna spin this engine. Just like so. Which, you know what? We'll bring these to this side so it's a little easier for us to do our thing. Come on. All right, so you're gonna zero the dial indicator on the top here, and then you're gonna bar the engine over. We'll go the other way so that would be more issues here. Okay. Now, because this engine has fly cuts right in the middle, we are gonna have to cheat this off to the side a little. Now, I'm sure there's probably a better tool for this job, but this is all that Meyer and I have. And then you're gonna just rotate it onto the piston. Until you get to the high spot here. Which I got 22, and then you're gonna rock the piston each way, because there is some play here. So I got about 22 thousandths. You guys can kind of see what we're doing here. Um, you measure right off the fly cut there. And then you have your dial, uh, dial indicator to the cylinder or to the top of the block. And then you guys can kind of see if it's got a high spot or a low spot, you got to rock it so you get the whole range here. And we'll go ahead and record that throughout the engine, um, all six. Then, once we're done with that, we got the crank thrust, cam thrust. Our last measurement here is going to be crank thrust. That's how much the crank can go forward and back against that thrust washer. So I got it set up a little different than I normally do it, hopefully to try and show you guys. But what I do is I pry. I pry on the front of the block right here against the teeth. So I will jam it all the way forward like so and then you have to jam it all the way back which I mean normally I do this with the engine flipped upside down but hey tomato tomato so we'll go ahead and jam it so we got eight thousandths and let's make sure we're zeroed out yeah so we got 8,000 crank thrusts on this bad boy. And then on the cam, um, we do the same thing, measuring. You basically just pry the cam out. Be careful, everything's plastic. On this one, we had three and a half thousandths, which is about normal. Uh, eight is really good for a brand new engine. Usually you want them right in between that seven to 10 range. So that is it, protrusion crank and cam thrust. So we're gonna wrap this video up. We got our protrusion measured, cam thrust, crank thrust. We got our rods, pistons, wrist pins, rings installed in the engine, cam tappets, J-jets, cam retainer, all installed in the engine as well. That's pretty much how I would expect a short block 
to come into me. Maybe an oil pan pickup tube, but then again, it just depends on who you buy it from. So hopefully you guys learned a lot. We kind of covered quite a few things. All the accessories and bolt-ons to this, we will cover in another video. I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Give it a big thumbs up, drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you are not already, and I will catch you on the next one.